Hi, in this video we have a function f of x equals the natural log of 1 plus x squared and we have to find where the function is concave up, concave down, and we have to find all inflection points. So concave up basically means that the graph is going to look something like this. Okay, that's called concave up. And concave down basically means the graph looks something like this. That's called concave down. So whenever this happens uh, on some interval, the second derivative is positive. And whenever this happens on some interval, the second derivative is negative. So we have to find the intervals where the second derivative is positive. We have to find the intervals where the second derivative is negative. Therefore, we have to look at the second derivative of this function. An inflection point is an actual point on the graph of the function where the concavity changes. Okay, so super key. All right, so to find inflection points, we'll basically set the second derivative equal to zero and um, investigate any points where the concavity uh, might change. Also, any points where things are undefined could be interesting because concavity could switch uh, at places where uh, the function is undefined. Okay, so let's go ahead and work through it. We basically have to start by taking the first derivative, so f prime of x. So the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x, but here it's the natural log of 1 plus x squared, so we have to use the chain rule because we have an inside function. So it's 1 over 1 plus x squared times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of 1 is 0, the derivative of x squared is 2x. Okay, so this is equal to 2x over 1 plus x squared. And so now we have to take the derivative again. And it looks like we have an x here and an x squared here, and it doesn't look like it's very easy to simplify. So we're going to use something called the quotient rule. Recall the quotient rule formula. I'll just use f and g. It says if you have a quotient, think of f as your top function and g as your bottom function. It's the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom 1 squared. So this is the quotient rule formula which we're going to apply here to this function. In our case, this is the top, this is the bottom. Let's do it. So f double prime of x, the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, the derivative of 1 is 0, the derivative of x squared is 2x, all over the bottom 1 squared. Let's double check that. Okay, it's the derivative of the top, right? that's just 2, times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom 1 squared. We want to set this equal to 0, but let's clean it up. This is 2 plus, and then 2 times x squared is 2x squared, minus 4x squared over 1 plus x squared squared. So that's equal to 2 minus 2x squared minus 4x squared is minus 2x squared over 1 plus x squared squared. I'm going to set this equal to 0. I'm going to write it again just because it's really far away and I want to have it in a nice spot. Let me just sharpen my pencil really quick. Yeah, nice sharp point for this problem. So this will be 2 minus 2x squared over, and then here we have 1 plus x squared squared. We're going to set this equal to 0. And this is a fraction. It's equal to 0. Therefore, the numerator is equal to 0. So this implies that 2 minus 2x squared is equal to 0. We can multiply by this piece here. This is never 0. So we would just get that, right? If you have a over b equal to 0, uh, you could just multiply by b. and So you get a equals 0. That's the idea there. Here, let's see. We can subtract the 2. So we get negative 2x squared equals negative 2. Divide by negative 2, we get x squared equals 1. Take the square root of both sides. We have a variable squared, so we get a plus or minus 1. So these are points of interest. We're going to plot these on a number line now. Let's do it here. Negative 1, 1. And we have to think about domain restrictions. I mean, we do have a log function. Um, in this case, I don't think there's going to be any because we have 1 plus x squared. So if x is 0, we just get the natural log of 1. If x is negative or positive, 
x squared is going to be positive. A positive number plus one is positive. So all is good. And it's worth thinking about because remember the domain of ln x is only x greater than zero. So you, you do want to think about what's going on here. So all is good because this is basically always going to be positive. So the domain of this function is all real numbers. So there's no issues. Very important to think about though, because not always the case. So now we're going to pick test points and plug them into our second derivative, which is here. I'm just going to put it in a box. And if the second derivative is positive, then that means that um, the function is going to be concave up on that interval. If it's negative, it's concave down. And note that these numbers are in the domain of the original function. So if the concavity changes at any of these x values, um, we're actually going to get y values and we'll actually find inflection points because we can plug them back into f to get the actual y value for the actual inflection point. All right, let's start plugging in some numbers. Let's plug in like negative two maybe. So just to check a number over here, just pick any number here you want. I just pick negative two. That'll be two minus two. Plugging in a negative two here, it's gonna give us four. And the beautiful thing is the bottom is always positive because it's being squared. So it'll be one plus four squared. So two minus eight, uh, that's negative. I'm just gonna say negative. I'm not even gonna keep going, right? Because you don't need to. You just need to know if it's positive or negative. That's all that really matters. So it's two minus eight, which is negative six. That's negative, the bottom is positive. So this is gonna be concave down because negative over positive is negative. Let's pick zero. That's a really easy number between negative one and one. So plugging in a zero here, we get two minus zero over one plus zero squared. That's gonna be positive. So it's concave up over here. And let's plug in two. Going pretty quickly here, just picking test points. Plugging in two here, we get, it's gonna be the same thing. It's gonna be negative because it's two minus two times four over one plus four squared, right? Plugging in a two here, going quickly, that's gonna be negative again, right? Because it's two minus eight, which is negative six. Negative six over a positive number is negative, so it's concave down. So in fact, we are going to have uh, some inflection points. The question wanted to have also the intervals where it was concave up and concave down. We can now name those. So it's gonna be concave down. So the concave down intervals will be negative infinity to negative one. And you always wanna use parentheses, okay? And also uh, one to infinity. Notice I put a comma between these. I didn't take the union. Um, if you take the union, technically it's not an interval um, because the definition of an interval is given any two points in an interval, every number between those points is in an interval. So if I take the union, that definition will fail. So good idea is to not use unions when you're listing your answers, just list them individually. So concave down here, concave down here from the picture, right? And that's how we got this. Negative infinity to negative one, one to infinity. Concave up is gonna be this piece here. It's a great pencil. So concave up, it's gonna be negative one to one. That's gonna be concave up. Okay, concave up. And now we have to find the inflection points and the concavity clearly changes at negative one and one. So I'm gonna write down our function again. It's this one, beautiful function. And we're just gonna plug in these points of interest into the function to get the y values, because we want the ordered pairs. So we'll do f of negative one. It's natural log of one plus negative one squared. That's gonna be uh, one plus one, so two. So natural log of two. So our first inflection point, I'll call it an IP, is gonna be negative one comma natural log of two. There's a little dot there next to my ln, that's, that's an accident. Let me just clean that up a little bit there. And then let's find another inflection point by plugging in one. Natural log one plus one, or because one squared is one, ln two. So the other inflection point in this problem is going to be one comma the natural log of two. So that's gonna be our other our other IP in, in this problem. Really nice, really nice problem. Um, not difficult, very standard, uh, requires the quotient rule. I hope this video has been helpful to someone. Good luck.